excellence um, this year for the success of our, our girls volleyball team. I wanted to elaborate just a little bit on, on um, Allie and Piper's comments about the naturalization ceremony. Um, uh, it, it was a re it was, I was really proud of how our students reacted so positively, so respectfully, so energetically, and with tremendous excitement to give sort of repeat standing ovations to the 45 people who were getting, um, getting, getting naturalized in Cape Elizabeth High School. It was very, very cool. Um, I will offer this, that um, there's a group of people who has the occasion to go to multiple naturalization ceremonies, and that is translators, because although everybody has to have a certain command of English, they don't have to be fluent. So there was a translator um, who was speaking to one of our staff members who says this is the seventh naturalization ceremony they've attended, and this was the most moving and well-organized and um, really neat ceremony. For me, one of the really cool things is watching, uh, after the event was all done and the students were out of the auditorium and things, almost every, if not every single one of the newly naturalized citizens um, walked up to the American flag, which was one on a corner of the, of the, of the, audit, of the stage, sort of under a spotlight and had their picture taken by family members. It was really kind of powerful. Um, and I wanna just tell a really quick story about this, and that is that 12 minutes before the event was to take place, we learned that there was a video that we hadn't realized was supposed to be part of the ceremony, Was we learned was supposed to be part of the ceremony. So I called Carolyn Young, our librarian, who was extremely tech savvy, and said, can you help us? <laughs> um, and she knows, she knows how to do it. She did whatever she needed to do. So 12 minutes later, the, the event opened with that particular video. So, so thank you to them. I do wanna say the US CIS staff, Citizenship and Immigration Services staff were incredibly gracious in, in working with us. And a particularly shout out to a Cape Elizabeth High School graduate of the class of 2004, Hillary Gauthier, uh, formerly known as Hillary Wymont. Um, she was the, she's been working for the USCIS for, I think, she's quite a number of years and just recently transferred to Portland. So she was able to be the MC. Um, I was gonna read a whole long list of people who contributed to the behind the scenes effort. I just want to give a particular shout out to Ted Jordan, um, Sonia Medina, who spoke. She's a science teacher at the high school who's also a naturalized American citizen. Um, I, I, did I say science teacher? Yeah. So <laughs> Sonia Medina, who's a foreign language teacher, who is a naturalized citizen, and Isun Simpson, who is a science teacher, who's a naturalized citizen, who spoke. Um, and, in, and then in particular, Chris, Christy Marshall, who was our sort of stage manager for the entire event. She really worked tirelessly um, to make everything happen. Um, tomorrow at our faculty meeting, we're sort of celebrating our, our, our uh, recognition as one of three Blue Ribbon schools from the state of Maine. Um, at the next board meeting in January, right around that time, we're gonna have some things with students as well to sort of bring them into the conversation about that and what that means. And with the board's permission during my principal time that day, I'm, gonna, I, I'm hoping to be able to turn it over to David Peary and <coughs> Nate Carpenter, who attended the, the Blue Ribbon Ceremony on behalf of the school, because my wife and I were overseas visiting our daughter who's on a foreign exchange program. And, I am excited about a couple of things. This is my last thing, um, which are, I think are connected to, not necessarily driven by, connected to the strategic plan goals of, of connecting our kids to the community. I think the naturalization ceremony reflects that interest as well. But on, on February 14th, we are planning, so I'm going out on a limb and hoping we can pull this off. I think we'll be able to. On February 14th, we are having our third all day sexual assault awareness day for all juniors and seniors. So there's a group of very enthusiastic students who are working with a group of very enthusiastic staff to sort of organize that and put the pieces together for that. Um, on that same day, which is February 14th, which happens to be the Friday, the last, the last day before the February vacation, and also happens to be Valentine's Day, it was a student's idea that that would be a really neat day to hold that event. 
Um, in order to make it possible for the entire school to be able to, for the night, all the 11th and 12th graders to be able to participate and to be able to use the entire school for that purpose, that day we are planning, a small group of us are working to make uh, that same day a job shadow day, job shadow experience day for all of our sophomores, we hope, um, and a community service day for all of our ninth graders. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And then finally, on our midterm makeup day, um, our plan is we are working on having midterm makeup day be a day when hopefully we will get many community volunteers in to look at the resumes that we are going to be having our juniors prepare in their, through their junior advisories. So to show it to people who are involved in hiring or admissions or things like that, get feedback on it, and then also to do a mock interview experience as well as kids begin to look at the job market, college admissions, and interviews in any number of settings. So we're so working on a number of things that we're excited about, and that's all for me, unless anybody has any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. It's a lot going on. Good evening. Um, first of all, I want to say things are going well in special education. Um, for the last week's early release, the occupational therapist provided a training on developmental vision impairments for the ed techs of both Pond Cove and the middle school. Uh, Casey Bereggi and I met were with the ed techs from the middle school uh, first, prior to the training, and with Pond Cove after, and the purpose being to hear how things are going on those front lines, because the ed techs are some of the most important staff that we have as far as meeting our students' needs. Um, and currently we are servicing 167 students in special education. We have 22 students in referral. We have two students that are outplaced. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So we have not one but two Professional Development Wednesdays in December. So uh, Del already mentioned some of the work that was occurring in the special education world. Um, at Pond Cove, I think I mentioned this last month, Ted Hall, our Great Schools Partnership Coach, facilitated strategic planning work to the, to the, um, the, the, the five goal areas that the school board adopted in September that were formed by the future search process. Um, and um, there were a couple of teachers who had participated in that work at the high school on November 5th, um, but participated again, um, this time with their Pond Cove colleagues. Um, so that says something about it. And then at the middle school, our social studies teachers worked with their high school counterparts on creating a document-based question writing sequence, grades five through 12. This is a type of writing that really originated, I think, with um, uh, in AP classes, and it's now being pushed down as far, actually, as the elementary school level, and it's just a really great way to get students thinking about how to, how to think and um, how to use writing to convey that thinking and to consider issues from multiple perspectives. And so it was, that the idea here is that we're gonna start it at a young age and then build on that work with each successive year. So that's what they did. And then our science teachers worked on common assessments. And then at the high school, the teachers worked in departments um, and then um, certain departments, health, PE, world language, guidance, art and music, also met with their counterparts in Pond Cove in the middle school. So uh, it's a very productive afternoon. And then next week we have another PD Wednesday um, at Pond Cove. Uh, Tom Charltray, our tech integrator, and Casey Bereggi, our BCBA, and Susan Bahadori, speech language pathologist, and Melissa Baum are all gonna be, it's gonna be a teacher, teacher's train, training teacher's experience. Um, they're offering workshops in behavior, um, Connect Ed, which is the online platform for our, our math program, and then something called Story Grammar. I'm not exactly sure what that is, so I'm gonna go to that session and find out. Um, so uh, anyway, it's, it's wonderful that we have teachers, staff members who are willing to, to share what they know with other staff members. And then at the middle school, the teachers um, who have been divided into response to intervention, cohorts, executive functioning, mindfulness, um, we have to ask Troy to help me out here with the other, oh, self-regulation in the, cl 
Oh wait, that's mindfulness. Um, oh yeah, positive classroom culture and um, student-centered instructional practice. So those are, the staff has been divided into those four groups and they're sticking with the same cohort for the year and then next year they'll do a different one um, and so on for, for four years. But anyway, that's what they're gonna be doing and they're, I think, excited about that. This will be their second meeting and uh, the first one was, um, a really positive. And then at the high school, this will be the second meeting of those cross-disciplinary professional learning groups. So that's what's happening next week. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, main educational assessments. Um, so if you're a parent, you know that um, the individual student reports from last spring's MEAs have been posted to the parent portal on, um, on PowerSchool and that they, this year for the first time, are in two different formats. So there's a one-page summary and then there's a four-page comprehensive report which includes subscore data. Um, we've been told that school-wide data will be available on the public portal in January. But what I can tell you right now is that district-wide, 82% um, of our students were at or above proficiency in ELA literacy. 67% of our students were at or above proficiency in math. And 85% of our students were at or above proficiency in science. And uh, this year's testing will take place from March 16th through April 10th. So if you're contemplating a family vacation, that would not be the time. <laughs> and uh, finally, the Pond Cove progress reports are gonna be completed in January. They do those, as you know, in January and June. And I just wanted to mention that we'll have new course learning targets in health for grades kindergarten and first, since that program has been expanded to full time. And, um, and we're also gonna have revised library media center learning targets. So I spoke extra long to compensate for um, Dell's shorter report and Jason's absence. Um, and happy to take questions if you have any. Okay, go ahead. I have a question. Oh, Actually, okay. not a question. I just would like, because you did throw a lot in there, I just want you to sure uh, remind the public of when the dates of the MEAs are. Just oh, say that again nice and yes. loud and clear. March 16th yeah. through April 10th. Great. Yes. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So in the budget world, uh, last Friday, I attended a seminar that was put on by Drummond Woodsum, and I learned more about how to strengthen my skills as a business manager for contract negotiations. So critical timing and very helpful, <coughs> and it was, a, it was a great experience. And um, another exciting thing is that the auditors are close to being able to start printing our financial statements. So the town finance director and I will be reviewing and approving the, the final adjusting journal entries, and we should be close to having financial statements after the first of the year. And the requested budgets are being input, and we are on target with our time frame. So we're moving right along to have our operating budget requests all submitted and ready for presentation. So that's exciting. And then tonight, for our graph, we are, again, a little bit under target. So that's still very good news that I like to be able to report. The far side of our report, the green arrow represents that at this point in time for the year, the spending pattern would be 42%. We are 41% for the general fund budget articles. So we're still slightly under, which is good news for the general fund. Any questions tonight? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have started work on the actual strategic plan. Um, administrators met earlier this month. We looked at um, many different strategic plans throughout the state of Maine and even outside of the state of Maine uh, just to figure out what kind of format we wanted. So um, a group of us are meeting again on Thursday to continue that work. Um, now we have all of the data from high school, middle school, and Pond Cove. So um, we'll be looking for for um, themes um, in, in that data and um, continuing forward um, 
with that. Um, our new website, we're going to have some beta testing on that the week of uh, December 16th through the 23rd. You'll be getting an announcement. Um, the information will go out to notify staff and community members along with a survey based on the beta testing experience. So look for that. Um, it's still not completely filled in, but we thought we, we just need to move forward with it. And uh, Kathy's been working really hard trying to f uh, fill some of the things in. Um, uh, community members and staff will have a chance to give us uh, suggestions. So, of course, after we get those, we'll look at the suggestions and then try to make revisions based on those. Um, but just so you know that it, we know that it's not finished, um, but we it, it'll be finished enough to get it up and going. At some point, we have to make the switch over, and we're pretty excited about um, about the new website. Um, and as the year progresses, we'll continue to make additions and revisions as we go. So um, it's not a finished product. Once it goes up, we'll keep working on it. Um, as Troy said, we went to the State House today, and it was a pretty amazing experience. And at one point, I was sitting, I rode the bus with the kids, and um, as did Troy, and I looked back. I was sitting kind of in the front of the bus, and I looked back, and Every student was in their seat, doing the right thing. Um, they were they were quiet. They were talking quietly amongst themselves. And then when we got um, up to the state house, they just were so well behaved, and it was, it was we were very proud of them. They they did a great job. Um, so it was a really nice day, and um, there was a letter from the governor that was read, um, and then we got to go over to the Department of Education where the artwork was displayed, and um, they had guides that took us through, and they um, they made sure that every student saw their work hanging on the wall. So it was very great. We were all over the Department of Education floor looking for paintings. So it was really it was really nice. Um, it was it was a great day. Um, Senator uh, Rebecca Millette was there, and uh, William Hess, the chair of the State uh, Board of Education, was there. So, and Dan Chuda um, gave remarks. He's the deputy commissioner. So it was really, it was really nice. The, and the kids did such a great job. And again, the, the naturalization event was was absolutely amazing. Um, our band played the the national anthem at the beginning, which was so moving. And then the choir sang, "Give me your tired, your poor," um, a number that they had. Uh, sung at the concert um, the week before, and it was just, it was great. It was a perfect song, and it was just, it was, it was hard not to be crying throughout the whole thing. It, it was so moving. It, it was really quite wonderful. Uh, the calendar committee has been working for the past several months to develop a calendar, and as you know, um, we can have no more than five dissimilar days with all of the districts that send into paths, which is quite a challenge. Um, it came to the end of last week, and we thought that we were out um, out of sync with one or two days, and then Gray kindly changed their calendar, to, and all of a sudden we all matched. So um, we'll be bringing the uh, calendar to the board at the next meeting for approval. But. Um, we have our five to some, no more than five to similar days, so that's great. Um, throughout the last month, as you know, our students have been involved in several performances. It's been so much fun to go and see them. The musical Footloose was amazing. The December concert up at the high school was amazing. Um, I missed the jazz concert because it was last night, but I heard it was great. And again, as Troy said, the fifth and sixth great concert is tomorrow night, and the seventh and eighth great concert uh, at the middle school is the next night. So um, our students and directors have done such an amazing job. It's just, it's so much fun to go watch them, and they have so much fun doing this. So um, they just, they awe us with their talent, so it's been great. That's my, okay. Um, so new business, do I have a motion? I move we approve the reappointment of Smita Santi, MD, as the school health advisor. Do I have a second? A second there. Any discussion? This is just an ongoing right, that we just right. typically revote on to right. renew. And uh, she she meets with the nurses and I um, about monthly. Uh, we meet in the morning and just to review 
any issues that the nurses might be having. Uh, you know, she's always on call for us too, so that's great. So she's a great resource. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, item 8B, do I have a motion? I move we approve the following 2019-2020 peer mentors, mentor Catherine Cornell and new teacher Paige Buchanan. Can I have a second? Second that. Great, and can you remind the public who Paige Buchanan? Paige is our new kindergarten teacher at Pond Cove and uh, I went to visit her and she's doing great and loving it, so. That's great, all right, all those in favor? Item 8C. I move uh, we approve the Cape Elizabeth High School Model UN field trip at Dartmouth College to Hanover, New Hampshire from April 3rd to April 5th, 2020 with supporting documents enclosed in our packet. May I have a second? Second. Any comments? This is a yearly event that happens. Um, it, I think it's great that we have students that want to participate mm -hmm. and go to this. So great experience. I, I think it's a fabulous experience. Um, all those in favor? Fantastic. And finally, 8D, not finally, 8D. <laughs> <coughs> May I have a motion, please? And move that we uh, Approve the Cape Elizabeth High School government class field trip to the college convention to Manchester, New Hampshire from January 5th through the 7th, 2020. Supporting documents are enclosed. May I have a second? Second. Uh, Laura. Yes. Great. Um, can somebody speak a little bit more about what this field trip is? Either this is a trip that just came up. Yep. Um, we've been waiting, apparently, and Jeff knows more, way more than I do about this, but we've been waiting for our presidential candidates to um, commit to this event. So some of them have started committing, and so we feel like more will fall in line, and I guess they went the last election? Yeah. And it was a wonderful event. They get to hear the, the candidates speak and um, very exciting. Allie and I will get to go. Uh, so you would like the board to approve this? <laughs> I think it would be really fun. Like, I want to go. <laughs> Um, I also have a question that uh, about payment, how this is paid for, if it's out of the budget, if parents pay for it, if uh, yes. there's support for those students who don't have the financial ability. I do know that Jeff said there was support for those students who did not have the financial That's great. So, so it's primarily for, for families who can afford, afford it, and it would be by them. If there are families for whom that's a difficulty, we, we will figure it out as we do it every time any comparable trip sort of comes up, and we will get anybody who wants to go to Manchester. That's great. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Congratulations, girls. <laughs> You're going. Sure. You're going. We want to hear all about it. Yes, please come back and speak to us. Tell us about it. Uh, item 8E. I move we approve the following 2019-2020 co-curricular stipends as defined in our packet. Is there something we need to Oh, add? we just didn't put the, box, the voting box. Oh, got it. I see that. Second. Uh, thank you. Any questions or comments? I hate to belabor the point, but the board would probably love to see these nominations before those sports seasons begin. I know, we just, these it's, just come in, it's so hard. we try. Right. All those in favor? Okay. Um, next up is item nine, school board agenda requests. Are there any requests? I would request the, um, uh, mock trial. 
bring the mock trial. Yes. And I believe that um, that possibly the two attorney coaches volunteers are retiring. Um, I don't know if is that maybe I would want to honor them if that was the case is all I put forth. I'm not sure if that's official. Yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea to bring them in and honor that. Anybody else? Any other requests? All right. Committee reports. Hope Policy Committee. Yeah, so um, you'll note we have no policy on the agenda for tonight. So we didn't bring any policies for voting tonight. We're still uh, working through the discussions on um, the set of policies that cover uh, the district's handling of sexual assault. So um, I'm gonna go through the, the background and what we've been talking about all along because I think it's useful to keep the, the entire board updated, um, clarify details. If anyone has questions, please interrupt me. Uh, and then also for the public to keep them apprised of what we've been doing. Um, so the policies, just to clarify, we have a couple of policies that have been in place for years. There, there's ACAA, which is the sexual harassment policy. Um, we also have a, uh, the JLF policy, which is the child abuse policy. Um, so these, these two policies work together uh, in a way um, that impact what happens, what the district has to do, and what our obligations are with respect to reports of sexual assault. So sort of as a gating factor, um, you know, during one of the earliest meetings this year, we had a student come and say, well, where, does, where is sexual assault addressed? So um, we spent some time discussing this, and, and it is clear that it is, it is um, you know, sort of the gating uh, policy that, that gets triggered when there's, there's an issue of se sexual assault that's reported or rumored or, or, or heard about is it's within ACAA. So sexual assault is a, an egregious form of sexual harassment. So to, to, to solve that issue, I mean, I think I've had board members approach me and say, where, where is this? Where does this appear? What's the clarification? So I think it's, it's pretty important and will be very, um, it's a simple uh, fix that we're gonna update it to include a reference and say, that, you know, this, this includes egregious, um, you know, to the, to the point that a sexual harassment rate rise to the level of a sexual assault, this policy is, is applicable. And also, you may also be um, in the area of where you need to go look at the policy JLF, which is child, sec child abuse. Um, so ACAA is where uh, the school has our guidelines with respect to Title IX. So there's a couple of different laws that are, are triggered when, when we talk about sexual assault. And as you probably remember from our earlier discussions, there's our Title IX obligations, and then there's our mandatory reporting obligations. Title IX is federal, fairly well established. I think we, we kind of have, as a district, I think we've had a, a, a sort of a, a, wet, a better understanding and process around it. Um, uh, and then there's the mandatory reporting piece, which is based on state law, and that's with, that is triggered by the state law that is in place to protect children from child abuse. So um, with respect to this issue, we get even narrower on the child abuse side and we're really talking about child sexual abuse. Um, and so when we were having our, our discussions in the, in these, in these, um, in the policy committee meetings, uh, we had the, the question was raised, you know, is, is sexual assault truly triggered? Does that really fall under the child sexual abuse per, um, policy? Um, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment, but there's an additional policy that we're going to be putting in place, which is the child sexual abuse policy. That's going, so that's going to be a similar to the JLF, which is child abuse. There's a more specific, narrow policy, which is directly addressing child sexual abuse. So in this world of sexual assault, what we've learned um, through uh, the trainings that we've had um, with that throughout the district and through interactions with the, the um, district council who's given us clarification on, on questions, what we've learned is, that JLFA or the sexual, um, child sexual abuse policy does in fact encompass cases of sexual assault that might occur but peer to peer. And this is sort of a, um, you know, that's, 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 that's the part that's sort of a little bit of a nuance here that's been introduced that we, we needed to get our hands around. So um, we, had, we had council clarify this point. Yes, in fact, 
peer-to-peer -peer sexual assault may trigger that child sexual abuse issue um, and, and trigger our requirement for mandatory reporting. So, peer-to-peer, -peer, yes, um, that's, that's, that's covered. Um, something that happened a year ago, it doesn't necessarily have to be an, an impending, ongoing threat. It can be something that was occurred a year ago where a student comes to us and, and reports sexual assault. That's been clarified as well. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going through all these details because I think it's important um, to sort of, I just want, I want it to be sort of in the air and on the record for the public and to understand that we've really gone through every um, kind of, every scenario and every hypothetical um, to, to clarify what, you know, where we go with, with each policy with respect to each of these issues. Now, the wrinkle comes into play and we looked at our policies and we said, okay, ACAA, sexual assault, Title IX, we're good, we're gonna add a reference. JLF, child abuse, that's, we're all fairly familiar with that already, and then child sexual abuse is the new policy, which is JLFA, that will come into play. The wrinkle comes into play when our support staff, uh, the licensed professionals, the social workers, the guidance counselors, the school psychologists, who also have a, um, a professional requirement under their licensure to maintain confidentiality with their clients, that they were then faced with a, a very uh, gray uh, area where um, traditionally it wasn't, it wasn't clear if sexual assault was going to trigger that mandatory reporting um, requirement and therefore require a breach of that confidentiality. And I, wanted, I, I think it's also important to, to air this point because I think those, those individuals within our district have been really struggling with this issue and it's, it's a challenge for them to sort of, they wanna come in and provide a safe environment for the students uh, to come in and report these issues. The students are expecting confidentiality. This might be the first time they've come to an adult and they, you know, it's, very, it's a very tenuous situation to begin with to then add the complexity of this might end in me having to breach confidentiality and make a call to the district attorney is a very challenging situation. But the bottom line is mandatory reporting does in fact trump confidentiality uh, and it's a nuanced area and these professionals are going to have to make that professional d decision and make that, that, um, you know, that judgment call. Um, and I want I mean, I wanted to bring to the board, and this is a separate issue from policy, but I, I want the board to be supportive of, um, you know, I think there's other things that other, other districts have done to address this where you could have um, a, a notification as part of the PowerSchool portal. So as part of our other documents, you can create a notification, say, so for parents and students who look at that, they, they'll know, you know this, is what can ha this is what happens within our district, these are our obligations. Um, you know, there's other ideas uh, of ways to approach it. It can happen within the counseling session. Um, I mean, that's not within the board's purview to make those decisions. Those are things that can happen um, that um, you know can happen with respect to the um, the procedures and the um, um, the other pieces that go to to support our policies. So, at any rate, when those come down, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that the board will be able to support something that we can to do to to address those issues and make it a more sort of um, a comfortable uh, environment for everyone involved. With that, does anyone have any questions? If I may just add as a policy member, I would like to, um, everybody has heard um, your description of what's been going on, but for people to just understand that um, the reason that we're not bringing policies to the board at this time and the reason that we've been working on these policies for months is because um, we're taking a very, very careful, thoughtful approach. Um, and we take this very seriously. Hope in particular has done um, an immense amount of research and um, I'd like to thank Hope. I would like to thank Kathy Stankard. I would like to thank the um, social workers, psychologists, and um, school counselors. Um, people are taking this very seriously and um, with great sensitivity. We will bring something before the board and have to make some decisions about how we go forward with this. But in the end, it's really just a big thank you. Oh, and one thing, uh, the next policy meeting is next Tuesday. A week from today, it was moved, so apologies, and more of the same on that agenda. 
Right. Open to the yeah. public, open to students. Three, three o'clock is it? Three o'clock on the 17th. Okay, so on our agenda it actually says the 10th. Mm -hmm. Oh, we so changed it. So it's the 17th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. At three o'clock in mm -hmm. the Jordan Conference Room. Yep. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Hope. Yes. Technology? Do we have any follow-up on technology? It's really we, about the website. It's about the website. So that's being launched soon. It will go live, will go live after the holiday. After the holiday. Yeah, after so exciting. First of the year. Yeah. And just to reiterate, I think it was an important comment that you made that it's not complete, and we know it's not yes. complete. Yes. But we have to launch it at some point, and so things will continue to be added, and it will continue to be tweaked. And there will be, after it's launched, there will be a survey for feedback. Is that no, the, the survey is, um, uh, should be completed next week during the beta testing. During the beta testing. Yeah. But okay. we'll continue to take yes. comments, so yeah. Okay, that's great, thanks. Uh, paths, is there any um, I believe reason? <laughs> just our calendar. <laughs> okay, Yeah. Um, great. Which is great news, and yes. thank you, Greg, yeah. for yes. being supportive on that. Um, student wellness, I don't think there's anything to say because they're, no. um, we're we will reigniting it meet, again this yes. year. A call for membership? Yeah. A call for membership. Um, if there is staff that's interested in participating, you could get a hold of Donna or mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Um, we would love to have, in the past, we've had nurses and social workers and administrators. Um, we would love to have some people join us. Buildings and grounds. Um, you want to speak to this? Sure, yes. Uh, we did not have a meeting um, this month. We had one scheduled um, for the Tuesday that we had the snow. I guess it was last Tuesday, the snow day. Um, and we postponed that, uh, or we canceled that. We have a meeting scheduled for January 7th at 6.30 in the Cape. Is it taking place in the library still? No, this one will be um, in the um, cafetorium. In the cafetorium at, at the middle school. So January 7th at 6.30 in the uh, cafetorium at the uh, Pond Cove Middle School. Um, and then we've added a meeting in February to replace the one that we canceled in December. Did so it says the library in our yeah, packet, no, I think. It's, so it's cross that Cove. out. Yeah. And, okay. Pond Cove Middle School. Um, and CEF has not happened recently, so nope. there's nothing to report on that. Nothing to report on that. And the legislative liaison, um, I think you've already spoken to that last mm -hmm. meeting, so there's not much more to say about that. Um, upcoming meetings, I'm not sure what this is, I'm not sure what office, so I'm going to go right past that. But just to reiterate, <laughs> we have policy in the, the in the Jordan conference room behind us <laughs> next Tuesday, so December 17th yeah. at 3 p.m. All are welcome. The 19th at 8.30 is a PATHS meeting at PATHS. Uh, and the next building committee will be happening January 7th at 6.30 in the middle school cafetorium. Uh, there will be a fourth meeting happening in February. We'll let you know that exact date when the next regular business meeting comes up. Okay. Yeah, we actually probably have it scheduled. We do have it scheduled. I want to say it's the 4th of February? February 4th? It's yep. February, February 4th. February 4th at 6.30. Do we know the location yet? That will be in the high school library. In the high school, the high school library. library. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and I think that's all for upcoming meetings um, that I can think of. Is there a motion for item 12? I move we enter into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 4056A for the purpose of discussing personnel items on the agenda. And a second? Sure. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. 
So we are going to go into the Jordan Conference Room to have an executive session, and we'll be back simply to adjourn. Have a nice night, everyone. Thank you.
We can nominate the new member, by the way, for the final motion. All right. Go so we have, motion, we have a motion to come out of the executive session first, right? Let's make the town council to do that. Do we? I, I don't know. No, we don't. You don't vote. You don't vote to come out of executive okay. session. Yeah. But so we do vote to adjourn. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have a motion to uh, adjourn. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.